Welcome to Chinivision, and who doesn't enjoy some Atari arcade action? Well, to be fair, it's Tengen slash Atari. Stun Runner, the 1989 game by Atari, a follow-up to hard driving and using a more advanced version of that hardware. So you can guess it's going to be a 3D, fully filled uh, polygon type game. And indeed, you want a futuristic bike and you have to race through all these tunnels, achieving the best times and shooting the baddies and avoiding the baddies and so on in a, in a 3D environment. Now, hard driving had been ported by Domark to the home systems, uh, fairly successfully on the 16 bits. The Spectrum Amstrad version's low frame rate, but I had fun with the CPC version, um, even if it was running about one frame a second. C64 version was so bad it never got released at full price, aside from being in a compilation and a later budget release. I saw the reviews of this in the magazines at the time. They weren't too hot, but the screenshots on the 16-bit versions looked stunning. So let's start off with the Atari ST. After all, it's Atari hardware. And you get to start off novice, intermediate, or advanced. So we'll start off at novice because it's going to give us a training level, hopefully. The red stars show the fastest path. Drive over the stars for bonus points and joystick forward or back for the shockwave bonus, which is like a smart bomb. Off we go! And it's running about nine frames a second, something like that. A um, little bit jerky, but you know, it's fully filled, filled 3D and you've got these big tunnels. This one's an open top tunnel here. You move left and right to pick the right path. And the stars are really showing you how you should be going through the later levels. Because when you go around corners, you need to bank into the corners to get the fastest speed. Because you're supposed to be travelling at up to 900 miles an hour. Although we're going at 500 at the moment. So you've got to go up there like that. If you're in the wrong place, you slow down. Due to the frame rate, the controls aren't that responsive. And they're also slightly twitchy because you're reacting to a rather low frame rate. But you do get the up and down motion of the arcade. It lacks the speed, unfortunately. Um... The arcade machine is really fast and really smooth, and although it doesn't, it's not 900 miles now. Patently, it still feels really fast. And really, the arcade machine is all about that sensation of speed. And if you don't get that, then you've got a little bit of a problem. And indeed, the reviews for this on 16 bits weren't too good. So over to the Amiga. Now I'm imagining this is going to be ostensibly the same as the ST version, probably about a frame a second slower, one would imagine. Welcome, Dan Runner. And uh, by the way, people will often say to me, Ginny, when you play such games, could you play them on a original Amiga, not your, your pimped up Amiga 1200? Well, I've had an Amiga 600 here for two years, and finally it's up and running, all repaired, got a new keyboard membrane. So here we go, this is my Amiga 600 for the first time on Ginny Vision. And yeah, it's running about one, one and a half frames a second slower than the ST. Interestingly, CMVG at the time said um, the Amiga version was faster than the ST version, um, which is wrong. And just while we're playing Stun Runner, remember Chini Vision is available on Patreon. You can help support the channel for just one dollar a month. You get some exclusive videos, previews of videos coming up on here, and a bit more chance to interact as well. And also check out Chini Vision 2, which is a separate YouTube channel. I dump on a few things that aren't really kind of polished enough or the kind of thing I'd put here on the main channel. Link for that, or link for both those, in fact, in the description. Uh, this is the PC version running on my 386 25 MHz machine uh, SX processor, so no maths coprocessor. So I imagine this should hopefully be able to replicate the arcade a little bit better. Now here we are running this on a 386 PC, and it's running about half the frame rate of the full arcade version, even on this, what would have been a fairly state-of-the-art machine uh, when this game came out in 1990. And on the 8-bit, you can understand things being missing, even on the ST and Amiga. 
but this still doesn't quite manage to replicate the arcade. You had, you got some of the objects from the arcade, but when you play the arcade version, you get the train things that are indestructible running along the bottom of the the tunnels and things like that. The objects are much better. And you would have thought they could have potentially upgraded this PC version to have a more of an arcade feel. But it just feels lower resolution, not just in terms of the graphics, but in terms of the objects in the game, in terms of how they're defined. They're much rougher um, than an approximation of the arcade game. Okay, I suppose that's always a thing with home conversions, though. This is the Sinclair Spectrum version, which I, I actually owned on budget. I, I paid money for it, uh, perhaps when I should have known better. But let's see. Let's see if my memory of this is right. You actually do get from the arcade machine you running onto your bike in this little animation. Stun Runner, Domark 1990, conversion by Mind's Eye. Stun Runner, the ultimate challenge. The ultimate challenge. Get the practice level, yes, we've worked out to play the game. So you got that. You each time you go onto a new level, you get a map, and some of the maps sometimes the levels split into two. You've got different routes. And I should say before we start the Spectrum version, if you do suffer from epilepsy, and this is a serious message, I strongly recommend. In fact, I order you to turn this off um, for reasons that will become clear. So if you have epilepsy, please uh, fast forward past the Spectrum version or just quit viewing now. Um, because I, I just worry about these things. As per my epilepsy warning earlier, you can see what the potential problem could be. Uh, it's just a massive... <laughs> it just, it just, you just get it. There's... Uh, ah! This is worse than I remember. Um, yeah, it's... Unbelievably bad. We're outside now. There's a good sense of speed outside. We're doing 900 miles an hour. Although as soon as you go wrong, it slows down horrifically. Um, <laughs> somebody thought this was acceptable to put out. It's a kind of approximation of Stun Runner. Over to the Amstrad CPC. Oh goodness me, what the mind's eye have in store for Amstrad users. And again, we get a little animation, so it's probably showing the Spectrum code. Press play to... Press fire to play. Press fire for pain, I expect. Collect stars. We're going to collect stars. And yes, same problem, really. I uh, get a little bit more sense of moving around the corners. This is beyond terrible. Why not do it in vectors? Oh, oh, I can't look. I can't even look at the screen. Who just... Oh, it's just... It's just getting movement by the... Even outside. Sense of movement. Oh dear. C64 version cracked by triangle. Presumably a cracking team aboard a North Sea ferry that sails between Felix, though, Gothenburg, and Amsterdam. Must be quite hard to hack games on a ferry because it moves up and down and around. Anyway, this C64 version, stun running the ultimate challenge at speeds of over 900 miles an hour. A stun mine runner must have lightning reflexes and accurate iron nerves of steel. Okay. Remembering C64 hard driving. Let's start off on novice. The red stars show the fastest path. Off we go. Oh, it looks a bit better. Uh, what? what uh, are they stars? 
There's my image of the game corrupted. No, no. Um, having, yeah, this, these are these are supposed. The squares are supposed to be stars. This is not a glitch. This is how the game was released. Um, and the scaling of the squares uh, gives a reasonable impression of speed, which the sides of the um, corridor thing do not. Oh, it's every level of terrible, not as bad as I suspect from the Amstrad version, which is saying nothing at all. It's a bit like saying, would you like to put a power drill through your arm or hit your arm with a hammer and nail? Back over to the ST. Ramp a lot. Catch the ramps. Oh, suddenly the ST version feels fast and smooth. Half of those 8-bit versions. This is a bit better. I mean, it's it's no good, but it's a bit better. Up on the ramps. and what, This is a really stunning sequence on the arcade version. You jump up on the ramps. There's loads going on. There are objects along the tunnels as well. There are the boost pads that speed you up and sometimes turn you into a wireframe to go really fast. Uh, you also have to collect the stars, what we've seen before. And additionally, there are smart bombs um, that you can collect, that you can set off, that destroy everything in your path. You know, on the ST, they got hard driving working really well. So, it's one of those things where... Like, why not use the engine from that if there's so much in common with the arcade machine? Um, but no, I suspect they've written it all from scratch, as they usually do with these things. Reinvent the wheel every time, and they've got an engine that runs pretty badly and doesn't really work. You have to think, why did Domark bother licensing it? And get it's Domark, so... Sometimes these companies didn't really think. They just thought, oh, it's a license, we can convert that game. And yet, actually, this isn't really being done justice to on any of the formats we're looking at. The ST and Amiga were what the fastest machines most people would have had at the time, um, which is the Amiga version here now, which again, oh, it, just, it lacks that urgency and speed of the arcade. Uh, you get really nice bits like the enemies hovering over you. You can, you can aim your laser beams up and down on this version and on the PC and ST as well. 8-bit versions, I'm not sure you can, at least it doesn't, doesn't seem to be a discernible effect. And here on the PC, remembering, this is a 25 MHz 386. Absolute top of the range when this game came out. Pretty much nobody apart from people in high-end offices doing very CPU intensive tasks would have had the processing power to run the game at this speed. Most PCs would have been at least half the speed of this, running something more akin to the ST and Amiga. If they had a kind of base level PC, like my Amstrad PC 2086, which was one of the more common PCs available at the time, running on an 8086 processor, then you could only imagine what speed the PC version runs at. Do not be deceived by just comparatively how well it is running on this machine. I, I ran out of time there. Back over to the C64, where... Yeah. And where the, scale, the sprite scaling on the band is coming towards you is... I'm trying to pick out positives here. Sprite scaling works quite well. Um, but your sprite flickers every time you fire. Uh, it doesn't really work, does it? Uh, most of the magazines at a TR time agreed, apart from your Sinclair, which seemed to savage it in the review and then still gave it a mark in the 60s. And uh, Amiga format, which where Trent and Webb also gave it about 60-something percent. Just, oh dear. And the shockwave thing, by the way, is like a smart bomb thing, and you collect those, and you push up and on the joystick, and it sends off a wave of energy in front of you on some of the versions. Here on the CPC, it's... Uh, oh. And on CPC... With all this palette, all the tunnels are the same colour, as far as I can see. So, on the machine where you can actually change the colour if you wanted to, and have a big variety of different tunnel colours, there isn't any. There's no need for these 8-bit versions to be this bad. There's a 
Ocean game that never got released but went on to an Amsterdam action cover tape called The Duct, where you race down tunnels and shoot things. And it's all done in vectors. And Ocean never put it out, but as I say, it was on the cover tape. And it's very similar to Stun Runner. And you think, hey, why not have something like that? On vector graphics, something a bit faster and just works a bit better. Oh, on the, I'm, I feel like the Spectrum version is hypnotising me. I feel like Hypnotoad is going to suddenly come out of the screen at me with all these flashing. At least I'm outside now. But, ugh. Here we go again, another hypnotic sequence for people easily susceptible to hypnotism or people suffering from epilepsy. PC version, there was of course CGA and EGA options, so let's have a quick look at those. This is the CGA version, which again would have been the version most people would have been playing. And it runs at the same speed as the VGA version. I've timed the frames. I'll be running at a about 12 13 frames a second something like that so it's not a bad speed but then again it's a really fast pc over to ega we shouldn't look that different for vga it should be color choices i suppose number of colors on screen and indeed the color choices colors are slightly different um on some of the levels but um it plays rather well um it's marginally slower than running in vga and cga um, don't know why that would be, um, but it, it's about one frame a second slower. But again, this machine's 25 megahertz, so quite fast. Stun Runner, absolutely stunning arcade machine, no question. Not an all-time classic, but some people got a lot of enjoyment out of it, and a very unique cabinet design, which is the same design you see your craft is in the game. Converting games like this to home systems is always a bit of a hiding to nothing, because they're never going to be matching it. But you can usually make compromises that make the games work. The ST and Amiga versions just need a little bit more speed to capture the look of the game, but it completely fail to get the speed. And okay, that's CPU usage as well. Perhaps you never can get it closer to the arcade. PC version, we've been looking at 25 MHz, 386 PC which would have been incredibly expensive when this game came out and most people would have been buying it about 1990, 91, something like that. I'm afraid, um, yeah, even on a fast PC for the day, it's still too slow, although at least it manages to better replicate the arcade and the ST and Amiga. The 8-bit versions, oh dear me, where do we even begin? You're going to have to compromise and change the design of the game. We know that. But it seems to have been done completely half-assed. I can't believe how bad all of these versions are, especially the Spectrum Amstrad version, which are absolutely criminally poor. They don't need to be that bad. You don't need to have flashing used to replicate speed. It just feels like the coders weren't very good. They didn't have enough time. It just feels like not enough resources were thrown at the game. There's plenty of games that do manage to replicate the arcade machines, and perhaps it didn't need to be as bad as it was. I'm never, I'm, I'm not saying Stun Runner on the 8 bits would have been any good, but it could have been better than this. The CPC and Spectrum versions are absolutely terrible. I don't even recommend trying them for curiosity's sake. C64 version is a, a relatively better. And I say relatively better stab at it. Still doesn't have the up-down motion of the arcade machine or many of the arcade machine's features. Doesn't have a sense of speed, but at least the sprite scaling coming towards you gives some kind of semblance of continuity to the gameplay experienced in the arcade, even if the stars are squares. Why not just say they're squares? It's just nuts. It just... Ugh. Anyway... Stun Runner is pretty horrid on all the systems, and really the only way to play it is to get the arcade version on main. Usually there's something to recommend on a home system version, on at least one of the versions, but I don't think I can recommend any of these versions at all. It's a poorly executed arcade conversion of a game that was always going to be difficult, if not impossible, to port to the home systems.